Coming up next is the empowerment song. Get ready for a life-changing experience. You shall be empowered for greatness and your God-given purpose unleashed. And now, Pastor Remy Oshikanlu from RCCG Chapel of Greatness is ready to encourage you with a word that would impact you for greatness. Hello, this is Remy Oshikanlu, the pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church Chapel of Greatness. The Chapel of Greatness is a Pentecostal Bible-believing church where the undiluted Word of God is preached. We are located at 201 Peninsula Boulevard in Hempstead, New York, and we're directly opposite the Hempstead Town Hall. Uh, We have two services on Sunday, 8.30 to 9.15, the morning due service, and from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Whatever you do, do not change that dial. This is not a religious program. This is a program about how you will connect to the one that will change your life for better. So what we do in the empowerment zone is that we empower by teaching and we help you to discover your purpose and unleash the greatness inside you. I want to thank all those that have been writing us at chapelofgreatness at gmail.com. I also want to thank all those that have been joining us and subscribing to our YouTube channel. You could watch all our, um, listen to all our shows and watch all our sermons and messages on YouTube. Just type in Chapel of Greatness and it will take you to our YouTube channel. And also, you could watch us live from wherever you are um, on, on, the, on the internet if you go on YouTube. So I pray that the Almighty God will grant you the grace, will bless you, will be with you. And I know that he will totally give you the grace to use some of the tools that we teach and we preach about on this program to make yourselves better. This is part three of our series, Fulfilling Purpose. You could say fulfilling your purpose. And I pray that you will fulfill your purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. The subtitle this morning is Integrity. For you to fulfill your purpose, you need to have integrity. So I looked up the dictionary. I said, what does integrity mean? What does it, what does it mean? It says, The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness, and some of the synonyms are like honesty, probity, rectitude, honor, good character, principled, ethics, morals, righteousness, morality, virtue, decency, faith, fairness, scrupulousness, sincerity, truthfulness, trustworthiness. That means people must be able to rely on you. You know, there's a, there's a phrase when I was young, they say your word must be your bond. And I tell my children all the time, I say no matter how bad the situation is, always tell me the truth. Even if you did something wrong, tell me the truth. I want to hear it from you. And once you know that the person you are dealing with is straight, is straight like an arrow, then you can build on it. Brethren, for us to succeed, we need to develop that principle. It's not a principle, that way of life. You need to work on integrity. Without integrity, we cannot go far. You can complain about everything else. But when somebody knows that you stand for something, when somebody knows that they can rely on you, they can count on you, you will see that the heavens will be open. It may may be long, it may be rough. It may seem like it's tough, but that person that took the shortcut will crash and burn. 
And because you have decided to be principled, there's a reward for you being principled. And so if you are going to be great, if you're going to fulfill your purpose, if you're going to make impact, you need to have integrity. Uh, well, let's use one or two Bible characters as our examples today. Most of us know the story of Daniel. Most people just say, oh, Daniel went into the lion's den. Daniel was a slave. When the children of Israel were taken into captivity, Daniel was really just a slave. But the Bible tells us a story about how the king wanted them to, he chose some of the people that were brilliant and wise and he wanted to develop them in a particular way. And he wanted them to eat certain foods and to do certain things. But Daniel, the Bible says, proposed in his heart. First, Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. He had integrity. You know, when I talk to the young people and we're trying to do the mentoring programs, they, they, they get under a lot of peer pressure. You go out and, and, and those kids, you know, around you in the school, they start telling you, oh, you're a mama's boy, you're, you're a wimp, you need to drink, you need to smoke, oh, you need to take all these drugs, you need to take all these opioids, it'll make you feel good. The integrity of who you are, knowing who you are, whose you are, will help you to say, no, call me what you want. If you go back to part one of this series, we said God created you in his image and after his likeness. He didn't create you in the image and after the likeness of the coolest guy in the school. And so when that guy wants you to do the things that will defile your body, which the Bible says it's the temple of the Lord. This is why it's so important to know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you begin to fall for anything. My mother used to say, if you stand for nothing, you will fall for everything. Because if you have a stand, if you have a column in your life, two columns, these are things I will not compromise. These are things I can compromise on. You can compromise on the color of the shirt you're going to wear. You can compromise on the type of shoe you're going to wear. You can compromise on you know, whether you want to run or you don't want to run. But you cannot compromise on the principles that make you who you are. And the principles that make you who you are is obedience to the word of God. This is so important. This is so, it sounds so trite, but it's true. So Daniel, though he was in captivity and the king could call for them to behead him immediately, says, I will not defile myself. You're a young woman, you're a young man, life has been treating you a little rough, and somebody says, oh, just take this little drug and it will help you. It will relax you. Oh, just smoke weed. After work every day, just smoke weed. It relax. There's nothing wrong with this. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, those church people, they don't know no better. It's better to get drunk and get laid. Get drunk, go out, do whatever you want. It gives you freedom. It removes all inhibitions. Why would you want to remove all inhibitions? The conscience, the inhibition in you is the spirit of God. That is saying, don't go and be sleeping around. Don't go and be drinking whatever. Don't go and be smoking whatever. Don't go and be eating whatever. Daniel had integrity. Later on, the king built some image of himself and they wanted Daniel to bow down before this image. They made a law and said, Daniel, you must bow. Because of the integrity of his heart. He said, no. I have a purpose. It doesn't matter whether you kill me. I know who I am. 
When you listen to this program, we have that intro song by that wonderful woman of God, Sinach, that says, I know who God says I am. Do you really know who God says you are? Are you really walking in power? Daniel, because of the integrity of his heart, said no. Those three Hebrew boys in the Bible, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you can look at their stories also, together with Daniel in the book of Daniel. You can look particularly at Daniel chapter 3, but read the whole book of Daniel. They said to the king, King, we will not be careful in answering you. If God wants to save us, he has the capacity, the ability to do. But if God chooses not to save me, so when somebody says, if you don't do this, I'll do this. Yeah, well, I wouldn't like you to do it to me, but you know something, you do what you got to do. I'm not going to defile myself because I'm a child of the living God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego chose not to defile their, themselves, but instead they said no to the king. Do you have integrity? And at the end of their story, both Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, everything the devil, the enemy threw at them failed. Instead, they were promoted in Babylon and they became rulers and governors. Don't compromise. Stand for something. Stand for truth. Stand for righteousness. Stand for holiness. And when you stand, even when people are mocking you, laughing at you, trying to pull you down, trying to tear you down, believe me, they take note. They know you are not just like them. If you're at your office, don't join them in doing the things that children of God ought not to do. When you file your taxes and they say, oh, you could just cheat a little here, cheat a little there and get more money back. You say, no, it's not worth it. $5,000 back on my tax returns is not worth my soul. It's not worth the God I serve. When they say, oh, just take this and you'll feel good and you'll feel like, say, nah, I feel good already. Because the spirit of God in me is like a wine. It intoxicates me for goodness. I don't need any other spirit. I don't need any alcoholic spirit. I don't need no drugs. Refuse to defile yourself. Stand for something. And as you stand for something, God will stand with you. Because he's a covenant keeping God. For you to fulfill your purpose, the enemy will send distraction so that they will derail you from getting to your destination. I live on Long Island. If you want to go to the city by the Long Island Railroad, you catch a train that's taking you to Penn Station. You don't get off on a Jamaica station because your destination is Penn Station. You don't get off on at Massapequa Park or, or whatever other station because your destination is Penn Station. You stay on the train. Because if you get off, you are derailed and you will not get to your destination. You must have this understanding that you are special. I'm talking to you right now. God took his time to create you. He's no respecter of person. He did not create that next person to be better than you. God is not partial. He's God over everyone. And he has given everybody 24 hours to make their impact in their lifetime. But he has given us choice. And so your choice is either, either to be a person of integrity 
That means you will be you'll be a decent person, you'll be an honest person, you'll be a person of probity, you'll be a person of good character. Let's look at the example of Joseph. There's so many examples, but I'll just use this these three: Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, and Joseph. Joseph was a slave, a young man, a teenage boy, sold into slavery, but because of the integrity. Do you know what the Bible says? I'm, I'm just going to quick, quickly look at Psalm 78, verse 72. I love this scripture. Psalm 78, 72 says, So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Talking about David. The integrity of David's heart and then the skill. You need both. You need the expertise and you need the integrity. Remember there was a message I, I talked, about, talked about about talent is not enough. You need integrity and talent. You need integrity and hard work. You need integrity and faith. You need integrity and perseverance. You need integrity. Let me go back to Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery. We know the story. He was in Potiphar's house. He was working in Potiphar's house with integrity. His destiny was for him to become a prime minister. Second only to Pharaoh. He didn't know that. God showed him a vision. God revealed to him his purpose. But he was a young boy. And then his brothers saw the glory of God upon him and they wanted to cover his glory. They wanted to terminate the light. They wanted to extinguish his star. They decided to kill him, but God intervened. Listen to me. No matter where you are, when, you are, when people gather together to try and destroy you, God will intervene in your affairs. God used Reuben to intervene. Then they threw him into a pit. God used the pit to intervene. Then they sold him to slavery. They put him in Potiphar's house. The devil continued to fight Joseph. But he persevered. And one of the methods, one of the tools he used to persevere was integrity. The integrity of Joseph's heart. And so Potiphar's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. Potiphar's wife set her target. That's the demon on assignment. Everywhere you're going, the enemy wants to derail you. He wants to distract you from your purpose. You are going to Penn Station. The enemy wants you to get up, get off the train at Jamaica. They will put something. Maybe there's a fair in Jamaica. You get down on Jamaica and that person could be shot at Jamaica. Meanwhile, their destination was Penn Station. God's plan for you, John 10, 10 says, his plan for you is for good and not for evil. He wants you to get to an expected end. That's your destiny. That's your destination. Your destination is for you to excel. Your destination is for you to prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Your destination is for you to be head and not to be tail. God wants to bless you and to bless the works of your hands. He wants to open the windows of heaven and release blessings upon you and your household. He says concerning you in Isaiah that you and the children he has given to you, you are for signs and wonders. But the devil has other plans. And this is why Joseph ended up in that little situation with Potiphar's wife. You can look at Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39 and read the story up. But because of the integrity of Joseph's heart, 
because he knew who he was. He knew that he had a destiny that was greater than the temporary satisfaction of a lustful woman. He will not sell off his birthright. He will not give up his life. He will not give up his future for that temporary satisfaction. So he said no. He fled. And he ended up in jail. He persevered in jail. And the integrity of his heart continued to work for him in jail. He was made the head of all those that were in jail. But he will not compromise. He wouldn't compromise. He wouldn't give up. He continued again. And he ended up at his destination. God has a destination for you. He has a great destiny for you. Everything around you is a distraction. Everything around you is to derail you. Everything around you is to get you out of what God planned for you. The devil wants you to be afraid of your future. The enemy wants you to be on drugs, to be hooked onto it. Wants you to be of poor moral character, to be into prostitution, selling your body for money, selling your, 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 yourself short. The enemy wants you to be where you are and to continue to go down. But God has a plan for you to go up. And this is not just some theory. This is not just, oh, pastors just talking. This is you I'm talking to. Yes, you don't go to church. Yes, probably you don't even believe in God. Yes, you don't think that it makes sense, but I'm telling you, you know that there's something in you that resists the things you are doing that you ought not to do. If you've been doing the same thing over and over again and you're not making progress, my friend, that is insanity. Why don't you turn back? That's why, you know, before we talked about sitting down, When we talked about the prodigal son, he got to a situation in his life where he came to himself. You have to call a meeting of you and you. Exclude everybody else. As you are listening to me today, I want you to make the decision today. I'm not talking religion. I'm talking about your life and your life belongs to God. And what God is telling you today is you make a choice. Make a decision. Make a decision that you are going to stop cutting corners. Make a decision that you are going to be a person of integrity. Make a decision that your future is too valuable to throw it away because of some little temporary high or something that will derail you from reaching your goal. Make that decision today. No more excuses. Don't blame anyone. Make a decision that you are going to change your life today. Make a decision that you are going to have two columns, compromise, non-compromise. Make a decision that the things that you will do moving forward from today will be only things that are decent, only things that are fair, only things that are righteous, that you will make truthfulness, trustworthiness, your lifestyle, honesty, probity, good character, Nobody can do that for you. You have to make that choice. If you want to excel, everybody wants to be great. Everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants to drive nice cars. Everybody wants to send their children to the best schools. But the path to good success, the Bible says that he make it rich and added no sorrow. That means there's a, there, there are riches that Uh, have sorrow attached to it. That's not from God. God blesses you to be a blessing. God doesn't bless you for you to suffer. But for you to stand on the promises of God, you must have integrity. 
And that's why the Bible says David shepherded Israel according to the integrity of his heart and the skillfulness of his hands. Skill is not enough. Hard work is not enough. Do you know what you need? That's what helped me. You and I need Jesus. We need to accept him as our Lord and Savior. We need to make a decision and confess our sins and say, Father, I'm sorry. I've made mistakes in the past. I want to stop. I want to move forward with you now. And then I want you to talk to him about the things that you have done that you don't want to do anymore. I used to lie. I used to cheat. I used to drink. I used to go around with women of easy virtue, but thank God for Jesus. And ever since I made that decision, my life has been on an upward trajectory. He can do the same for you. I pray today that God will touch your heart and then there will be a life-changing experience for you. And you will begin to excel and begin to grow. This is the Empowerment Zone. My name is Remy Oshikonlu. I want you to join us again next week on this same station or join us on YouTube and just put in Chapel of Greatness to listen to us. God bless you and God be with you.